And welcome to the campus of Ann Arbor Pioneer High School for here on in Pioneer Women's Water Polo. I'm Pete Poyer along with Kevin Bryant with all the action. And we are just underway. How you doing, Kevin? I'm doing excellent. Warmest night of the year so far, and we're right next to a pool. Couldn't dial it up any better than that. Unless you were in the pool. That's it. Oh, well, the River Rats control from the open. Handling for Huron is Jamie Hibbs. Now I'm going to get it back down low to Bullhouse. Second time this week, Pete, we've seen the Rats host uh, or be the, um, the visitor for a team on senior night. That's right. It is senior night for the Pioneers. They were introduced before the match. And we'll see if this inspires them. Pioneer 9-7-1 here on 16-3-1. So maybe a tall order for the Pioneers even at home. We'll see how it plays out. Pioneers first possession. Now picking it up, Andrea Gabrion. Both teams look like they're trying to feel each other out. They do know each other being crosstown rivals, seeing each other a lot, but every game's different. And ball flipped away, and they'll be here on possession. Now Rebecca Ford going down pool. She looks to pass, gets it over to Jessica Gargan, now into the middle. In the middle for Hibbs, and she loses control. And back to the goalkeeper, Lindsey Averill. Good defense there by uh, Yo-Yo Lee. Playing in the hole there for Pioneer on the defense. Well, McCown with it, now into the middle. Weichmann can't handle it as it's taken away from her. And it'll go back the river at way. When we watched Huron earlier, we noticed that they were shooting from the outside with those lob shots, and they had it down to a science. Maybe uh, we'll see a little bit of that tonight. And another turnover and controlled by Pioneer. 5-10 to go here in the first period. Amanda Sugai throws it down to Weichmann. Very deliberate offense right now for the Pioneers. Not the really moving the ball freely. Tried to get it into uh, Desiree Kugel, but uh, off her hand and back to the River Rats. Now Chamberlain way out high. Long pass down the middle to Hibbs. Hibbs gets it. Surrounded by two Pioneer defenders. 18 seconds on the shot clock. Looks like we might have a penalty there, Pete. Pioneer will go on the power play, so reset that shot clock back to 35. And Pioneer will try and work around their offense. No, back out top to Hibbs. Kind of a zone defense right now for the Pioneers, keeping the ball on the perimeter. Now's when the shot clock becomes a factor. Now shots with it on the near corner. Five seconds on the shot clock. Good defense there. Way to kill the penalty. Nice intercept by Meredith McKeown. And here come the Pioneers back. Now down low to Gabrion. Into the center to McCown. Now down low. Now back out top quickly. And a looping shot and in for a goal. Andrea Gabrion with the goal for Pioneer. And they go on top, 1-0. 3.39 to play here in the first period. Nice senior night goal there. She kind of lobbed it. One of those uh, misdirection type of shots where you're just lobbing it over the, uh, the gold goalkeeper's head. She, it's really difficult play for the goalkeeper because you don't know when to jump. And that is just perfect shot. Well, back down low for Huron. Trying to get it into Hibbs. It's 
going to be Pioneer possession. So right after the penalty, Pioneer comes back down on the transition, and they Actually, get on Huron's the board first. going to get first. a penalty shot here on the foul. Jamie Hibbs, and she buries it in the corner. And Huron scores and knots it up at one. That's a five-meter shot. It's almost a give-me in this sport. I, you know, with the, the uh, with the high school player not having the length of an Olympic type of person to really cover the net. Well, I'm very reminiscent of the penalty shot in soccer. True. And Kugel can't get the shot off, so he'll be here on possession. Here's that goal on the replay. And Hibbs puts it in the upper left corner for Huron's first goal. So penalty shots usually come from a major penalty like that where either the, the, the uh, offensive player is dunked under or the ball is dunked under by the defender, allowing the other person to have a free shot or and a penalty Hibbs shot. And that free shot. Oh, down low once again. There is a quick shot. Save me. That's pretty. Lindsey Averill with a nice save for Pioneer. And timeout. So now the scoring evened up, 1-1. First period action. Both teams got that the, the energy of the excitement of the night out of their system. And now we're seeing some scoring, Pete. Well, and I think that uh, the coach for Pioneer, Will Hart, called a timeout because he was seeing uh, some holes in the uh, the Pioneer defense. He didn't like. Averill came up with a nice save there. But really, uh, with shots, he was all alone right there. Got a, got a really good shot off. Uh, so I think he wanted to call timeout. Get Reset things settle, Get things settled down on defense and then try and, you know, because they'll have possession coming out of the timeout. They can work on their offense at that point, too. Well, There's you, a look at at Will Hart coaching his team right now. Well, you mentioned the records to begin with, so this would be an upset, but it'd be a great upset on senior night in front of your home crowds, in front of the students that you go to school with uh, for the Pioneers to come away with the win tonight. Absolutely, and there's a look at the Pioneer faithful. Nice crowd on hand for this water polo match. Now we're looking at Justin Thorison with his teammate team. Drawing up a play. Setting up his defense, perhaps, on the uh, next possession. Water polo not being one of those sports that is is a world famous sport, really not famous, but uh, a sport where a lot of people come out and play. So I bet a lot of these girls have played together in the summer months. I would I would definitely imagine. Well, Pioneer on possession. Gabrielle Holt handling. She'll send it down low to Sugai. And her pass falls short. It's intercepted by Bullhouse. Looks like they no. actually have numbers there. Yeah. Hibbs with the duck move that didn't work. Good pass. Might have a shot. Now to Gargan with the shot and the goal. Jessica Gargan with the goal. And Huron goes up 2-1. Jamie Hibbs found her. It's a good look up because on the transition there, you could see that Huron had numbers. And you can see Gargan right here. And you see the pass turns around. Gargan turns around and she just fires. No defender around her. Good play. This is the way water uh, polo is supposed to be, Pete. It's it's more of a softball scoring type of sport. It's not like a soccer sport. Everybody loves goals, except the coaches yeah. on the defensive side. <laughs> and maybe the goalie. Now Gabrion out top. The guy not really looking for it. Now 
Let's see a yellow card? On the Huron coach, that yellow card was uh, um, awarded to. You can see a shot of the coach right there having a discussion with the official. Something must have been said that wasn't appropriate. Oh, Pioneer on the power play. Now across cool. Looking for Weichmann. She'll pick it up. And Gabran will pick it up off the surface of the pool. Back to McCown. Now over to Sugai. Back to Weichmann. Weichmann with the shot. Yeah, right into the hands of goalkeeper Nora Eater. Power play averted by the River Rats, and they'll set up on offense one more time. Called Lee for a foul there. Now Ford over to Shots. So now back out to Ford. Over to Hibbs. Back to Shots down low. Cross pool, trying to get the Pioneer defenders out of position. And the quick shot by Gargan. I think she kind of didn't have quite a good grip on the ball. Yeah. Kind of whiffed on it and didn't get a really good shot off. Well, see, that was one of those, you know, it was a power play opportunity, and the Rats just didn't take advantage of it. Under 30 seconds to play. Now Gabrion with an open shot. Save made by Eater. <laughs> 20 seconds. Shot clock turned off. McCown with a skip shot. Stopped by Eater. So one last transition play for the Rats if they can really move the ball down. Uh, just four seconds. Short clock. Going to take a quick one. And that passed too far, and that's going to do it. And at the end of one period of play, it's here on two and Pioneer one here on City TV Sports. Kevin, I thought really Huron carried the play in that first period, but uh, only a one-goal advantage for the River Rats. The, the Pioneers are staying in it. Well, Pioneers, they, they got on the board first, nice in front of the, the, the home crowd here for senior night, and the Rats came back right away on the transition. And then, of course, the turnover. The turnover came into the last goal there, and the, the Rats are, are playing a little bit fresher in the water tonight. They, this seems to be moving around. They found their rhythm a little bit sooner than the Pioneers have. It's always a little bit more pressure on senior night. You're, you're playing in front of maybe not just the, the, the regular family members that come out, but it's your senior night. It's the last time that you, you get a chance to say, this is my pool. This is my house. And you get a lot more fans coming out for that. So, of course, you got a little bit more pressure. You, you don't want to play bad in front of all these folks. It's a great crowd. I don't think they play poorly. Not poorly, no, not at all. But I think both teams played spirited play there. But I just think the Rats, you know, their record is an indication of they've been playing uh, better all year long. And perhaps they're simply just more talented. Of course, each year you're, you're graduating here. I mean, Pioneer had only four players weren't seniors on their team. So Pioneers back into the pool, back out. And the River Rats follow suit. Pete, what would you guess? Hockey, water polo, the more tougher endurance sport. Because both of them are, you're in constant motion, you know? Well, I would say probably water polo because you don't ever get a break in hockey. You go to the bench, get a break. Yeah, you get a line change, true. Obviously, the periods are much shorter, but still, you have to be in constant motion. Constantly. I would imagine they're burning a lot of calories in one match. And race to the center of the pool to begin the second period. Be controlled by Huron.
Doesn't look like the Rats really have too many uh, new players in the pool. Same five out there for six. And now shots with it for Huron. In the center to Ford. Try to get it down low to, to Gott. Intercepted by Pioneer, and they'll head back down pool. Good job there by Kugel. Ah, turnover. Errant pass. Swim for it. Who's going to get there first? Got offsides. Here on still with it. It's a penalty. Back to Hibbs. Right out front, point blank, and she scores. She gave her the 0 1 2 pump fake. Nice. Jamie Hibbs with the score, and here on up now 3 1. Hibbs' second goal on the night, but that one's pretty right there. She kind of had the goalkeeper. Didn't know what she was going to do there. Now, Pioneer defense rapidly closing, but didn't get there soon enough. And well, Hibbs puts it in the far corner. Well, that penalty really opened it up for the Rats that time. Point blank shot for Emma Weichman. And Eater was there for the save. Official's going to stop play here for a moment, but yeah, Nora Etter is having a fantastic night in the net. She stopped that. That's got to be her third spectacular save. Probably the most important position on the team, of course, is the netminder. A little bit of hand signals going on between the officials. Today discuss why that play was stopped, but we're back in action now. Oh, yeah. Shots will send it down low to Bullhouse. Obviously some rough play there. Boy, the, the Huron coach is not too th pleased with this officiating crew. It's like they're stopping the momentum. I think we might have some stoppage in play for the clock. We're, we're uh, having a discussion on how much time should be on the clock, and that's going to be hard to figure out. Yeah, the last I saw it said 429, and now it's a 7. I think the referees are going to confer and then go to the scores table to fix A little the shot clock Bob going on here, like Sparty Bob, because, uh, you know, the Pioneers are down and they're trying to get a little bit more time on the clock. I don't think so. Just assume it. Yeah, it is early. Yeah, it's this is high school sports. <laughs> hey, it's sports. I know. And you look at that look on the coach right there. He wants to win this game. This is the best looking scoreboard I've seen all year. And for it to be malfunctioning, that doesn't say too much about the manufacturer of that scoreboard. Uh, now, they're, now they're fixing this shot clock. Well, 4.42 to play in the second. Not a bad break for the players in the pool, though. We're just talking about how much constant motion they have to be in. They get an extra little time out here. Technology, folks, gotta love it. Absolutely. It's like my smartphone sending off text messages at random time. Okay, I think we're reset. 434 on the clock, 18 on the shot clock. Good eye there, partner. I think you had that right on the button. That was close. No, you're wrong. You were right. Thanks, Kevin. You got it. It's always nice to know when your partner has your back. Always. Obviously, the players are thrown off a little bit from that stoppage of play. It's going to take them a little bit to get back in the rhythm. Oh, here on on with just five seconds on the shot clock. Threw them off. Gibbs with the long shot, but it's before the shot clock went off, so back to Pioneer. Justin Thornson over there on the River Rat sideline is not too pleased. Defense! 
Well, Gabrion, the lone goal scorer for Pioneer so far, handling the ball. And it was Way from out outs- and it was from outside how she scored it. it. It wasn't a power shot. Edder has stopped everything that's come into it. Well, picked up by Sugai. Now back to Gabrion. Shot clock counting down. I don't know if that's a testament to the Huron defense or the ineptness of the Pioneer offense, but they just are not getting quality shots on goal. Hips still swimming up pool for Huron, holding it out high. Now over the shots. That's where you want to take the shot. You're open. Now Hips with the long shot off the sidebar. Boy, when Hibbs goes up with that right arm, you know the shot's coming at you. Now a long pass down Poole. Flip to McCown. McCown takes a shot and scores. Meredith McCown scores for Pioneer. That makes it a 3-2 contest with 3.02 here to go in the second period. Nice move there by McCowan turning around with a soft pirouette, had the ball kind of back stepping into the shot and fired it. So you can see her take a little pirouette right here, turn and just fire. Just Off the inside post. the post. Now here on turn on offense. Looked like a lob pass intended for Hibbs, but too far and Scooped up by Abril for Pioneer. I think the uh, captain there, Rebecca Gott, had something on her mind, and her teammate wasn't reading her mind. Both teams fighting for possession of the ball. And Huron will come away with it. Kind of like a press defense there for a moment by the uh, Pioneers. Took a good 10 seconds off the shot clock. Now into Hibbs in the hole. Now back out top. Four just a bit high on the shot. A little bit over the crossbar. Oh, Stepnitz with it for Pioneer. Should get over to Weichman. Back out top to McCown. Pioneers really trying to do some movement of the ball as well as their set on offense. You can see both players or the players are moving all over the place here. Now Gabrion back to McCown. Trying to get it down low to Kugel. Now back out top to Gabrion. Got to get some better spacing out there for the Pioneers. They're too close together right now. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Gabriel's going to have to fire a quick one. And shot clock will run out. And back over to Huron. Minute 20 to play here in the second. And this is where you can really make up some time on the shot clock by on the transition game, getting the ball into play sooner. Well, Gargan will handle it. Send it back out top to Ford. Got a shot here. If she, good defense. Gargan will keep control of possession. Oh, a cutting shot. Oh. Batted away from here and picked up by April. It was a good move there by uh, Shots, just to get in the play there. Just couldn't keep control of the ball. Now Stepnitz, her pass is intercepted. And it'll go back over to Huron. Now a long pass down, trying to get it to Gargan. That's taken away by McCown. Nice defensive play. Tried to go for the fast break uh, opportunity there. Last 30 seconds of the second period. Shot clock off. Now Sugai. Into Weichman. Defense! 
Final 10 seconds, a little drama here. Now back out to McCown. We're too close together. Oh, come on. Gabrion. And that's unfortunate. Yeah, really not. No clock recognition, and we head to the half with the River Rats with a 3-2 lead over the Pioneers on City TV Sports. Be a part of creating television for your community. Come on in to the Community Television Network, CTN, where we offer free services like production training, facilities, and airtime to Ann Arbor residents and nonprofit groups. CTN, where Ann Arbor is on TV. And welcome back. It's the third period here. Here on in Pioneer. Here on with a 3 2 lead heading into the second half. Huron's actually had better shots on goal tonight. Pioneer's been playing tough on defense, but on those breakaway transition plays by the Rats, they've seemed to be able to get the ball in the net. Pioneer's made their opportunities count when they've had them. And race to the pool. Looks like Hibbs got there first from the Rats. We're having clock issues already, huh? Reminiscent the clock is of not the supposed to start until they touch the ball. And it seemed like they started the clock when they started racing to the center of the pool. So basically they fight for it. A little jump ball. I don't think it was an issue with the clock. I think it was an issue with the clock operator. There you go. So controlled by Pioneer. Some unnamed parent over there operating. Bless their heart. We won't name names. Intercepted by Huron. That's Chamberlain. Really an errant pass there by uh, Garbar. Now flip forward. It'll be picked up by Gott. That's a hard shot and a goal by McCown. And that's going to tie it at three. McCowan's second goal. The first one was soft. The second one, not as much. That one was a nice shot. And she just rose up high and fired. Well, this is just what the Pioneers needed to start the second half. Tie this match up. Oh, Bullhouse with it down low. Looks like there was a minor penalty there on the uh, Pioneers. And a shot flipped toward the net, sails wide by Kylie Power Sullivan. And Averill will send it down pool to Sugai. And a referee's call a foul on Pioneer. Looks like there was two people in the hole at the same time, and I believe there's only one person allowed down there. Good eye, Kevin. Good eye. Just checking out the officials' hand cues. 
Wow, nice intercept by McCune. And she'll Already. head back down pool. Already, Pete, it looks like Pioneer's playing more spirited on the defensive end. That's their third turnover so far. Maybe that break at the half plus the orange slices are doing wonders for the Pioneers. The magic orange slices. Man, I miss those. I'll bring you some next time. Please. Well, McCune trying to handle. Now down can... low. Intercepted by Power Sullivan. She'll send it back to Eater. You know, that you can always tell. It's difficult from the TV angle to see all the action that's going on up underneath the pool. But once you see two hands by a defender go up under the water, you know that there's some physical play going on. Well, intercept by Sugai, picked up by Chamberlain. Chamberlain over to Power Sullivan, and Power Sullivan off the crossbar. Now race for it. Well, Power Sullivan has a nice little, she has a big mitt to grab that ball out of the air like that and just fire. Now Gabrielle will pick it up for Pioneer and head down pool. Now entry pass. Trying to back her in. That's Stepnitz over there. Or check it, that's McCune. And across pool, the Whiteman. Stepnitz over to McCune. And that shot is a little weak. He picked up by Eater, and Huron will head back down pool. And the Pioneers are playing some more full pool pressure here. They're not allowing the Rats to just take the ball straight up. Oh, that shit, shot sails way high. Nice hands there by Sugai to really not allow the uh, good angle for the shot. Entry pass into the hole. Defended by Huron. Referee's whistle will stop play momentarily. And Gabrion with the shot, and that sails wide of the net. Just a bit outside. Good thought, though. Oh. This time, it looks like Huron was able to break the pressure a little bit easier. Now Chamberlain tried to get to the Hibs, and it was intercepted. Way to clear it from out in front of your net. That's McCune doing work at both ends of the pool. Oh, nice quick flip and a Gabrion shot. Off the goalkeeper and into the net. And Pioneer takes the lead, 4-3, to three, with 2.43 to go here in the third. Well, the last time down, she just missed outside. Guybrion on the, the fired shot. This time, she fired it right in the net, coming right at you. Look at this angle. Perfect. Really caught Edder off of, out of balance that time. Crowd enjoying the match so far tonight. Especially when the home team takes the lead for the yeah, of first course. time in, there of the you, night. There you go. Maybe the Pioneers can ride this wave of uh, emotion as well as uh, motivation for those fans that are up there in the stands. They're cheering them on. And that's going to do it for the shot clock. Looks like they're going to reset it. That's a cool looking ref. 33. What did you just say? It's a, it's a cool looking ref. Oh, okay.
Almost oh. as uncool there. Uh, Hibbs holding it out high. Back to Ford. Back over to Hibbs. Looking for the opportunity up high. And there's the shot off the crossbar. But right back and here on a reset. Oh, open oh, shot Power there. play over. There's Hibbs with the shot over the net. Trying for the old hat trick that time, Hibbs, but just a bit high. I think that was the, one of the uh, better offensive opportunities the Rats have had this third period. Uh, they were really working the offense on the power play there. Had a great opportunity. Well, Gabrain will back it out. Reset the play, now it's restarted. Thornson's really still upset, the coach for the Rats uh, with the officials. Cross pool over the head of Gabrion. She has to go back for it. 22 on the shot clock to McCune out top. Over to Stepnitz. Now back to McCune. Rats come back to full strength. Shot clock. Well, five seconds on the shot clock. McCune and with the Heron shot. is on the uh, offensive if they can get the ball up. And they do. They get it to Bullhouse. Bullhouse. One on one here. Alone. And she scores. Maya Bullhouse on the fast break. And here on ties it back up at four. Good play there all around for the Rats. Good defense. They come out of the power play. They stop the shot. One player releases early. And wow, they found her for the shot like that. Averill just defenseless in that, really, at the mercy of the goal scorer, Bullhouse. 30 seconds to play in the third. And we're all knotted up again. Now McCune has it for Pioneer. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Now they got Gabrian. their defense set up back, uh, trying just to protect the net. Gabrion with the shot and the score. Andrea Gabrion. Her second of the period. Uh, Pioneer goes back out on top, 5-4. Almost from the same spot she put it in the last goal in. Almost. I mean, you just, well, they're just working it back and forth, looking for the opening. And Gabrion finds it in the top corner of the net. Under 10 seconds to play in the period. And that's going to do it for the third period. Pioneer forges a lead. They're down 3-2, entering the period, exiting. They're up 5-4 as we head to the fourth period here on City TV Sports. Well, great period there by Andrea Gabrion, the senior captain uh, for the Pioneers on senior night, putting in two goals. Really uh, leading her teammates on. Exactly what you like to see out of senior captain. Absolutely, Kevin. And we'll see if they can carry it through in the fourth period. And these seniors can come away with a victory here on senior night. Oh, Justin Thornton's really making sure his team is uh, on the same page as he is. And it, it really is just setting up the defense there. Because that third, period, that third period saw Pioneer have the best as far as their offense is concerned. Most uh, 
consistent play from shots and from goals. And that's exactly what we could see that play that he was showing how their cross court passes are affecting the rotation of the Huron defense. Now both teams back out of the pool to begin the fourth period. Pretty exciting match so far. A lot of good shots on goal, a lot of a lot of good defense by the goalkeepers. Quality well, and of course, match. You, we were looking at it before the match. On paper, it looked like the all Huron, but these Pioneer girls have really come to play. Well, this is one of those classic crosstown rivals, so, you know, they always throw the records out the window. That's right. Oh, Huron will begin on offense. Chamberlain holding out high. I've got a timeout. And Justin Thorison is going to call timeout for Huron. He must have didn't like that first play because only 12 seconds into the period, we have our first timeout. And you can see Coach Hart trying to you know, talk to his players and keep them on the same page as well because it's been an intense effort from the coach if you can call a coach having an intense effort but Absolutely. he's been over the officials the entire game even in between the periods well Thorson's received a yellow card yes in this match so yeah he is uh he's not been happy tonight For some physical play, maybe one of the pioneers is not playing any uh, longer. Yeah, Katie Stepnitz has been ejected from the match for Pioneer. Well, the action's back on and see, see what the coaches have uh, dialed in for this uh, play here. Now cross pool pass. Now back into the middle, quick tip and a goal. I like that right there. That was sweet. Jessica Gargan with the goal for Huron. And we're tied again. Kind of like a alley-oop right there. I mean. Yeah, I just kind of lobbed it in, and it was kind of uh, Constant motion. almost punched in. Yeah, kind of pirouette and right in. It's even kind of tough for our guys to catch it. Well, I guess that's what that timeout was for. Oh, 6.20 to play. We're tied. Similar to earlier in the week when we were watching Skyline in Huron, how the, the game was close in the fourth period and the home team kind of took over. Let's see if the Rats can muster up some strength here. A turnover on the referee's whistle, back to Pioneer. Now Gabriel looking to pass down Poole. Going to be defended by Chamberlain. A lot of pressure. Well, it takes, takes a, a lot of time off that shot clock. Exactly. I cut in front of you. I knew that's what exactly. you were going to say. Exactly. <laughs> We've been doing this together, right? Just a little bit.
Oh, nice intercept there. Rebecca, excuse me, that's uh, Kugel for Pioneer. Now quick intercept by Ford. And the River Rats come back. It'll be picked up by Hibbs. She hits Chamberlain down pool. She has some help. Surrounded by yes. three Pioneers. Chamberlain gets it to Ford. Now back out top to Hibbs. You can see how the Rats are spacing themselves out a little bit better than the Pioneers are all kind of clumped together when they well, get on the offensive end. Following the Rats' position over to Pioneer. Andrea Gabrion is the one that uh, the Rats need to keep an eye on. A long shot out top by Sugai, sails wide. Not sure she really had a good hold of the ball there because it was kind of a half power, half not power shot. Kind of a lob in between. Now picking it up for Huron, Chamberlain on the far side of the pool. She seemed to lose the handle, but picked up by Hibbs. There's a quick shot, and a save made by Abril. Nice thought, but you, 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 probably from the River Rat uh, player, you want to try to go for an angle. And so we have a turnover here. Sierra shots with it for Huron. Now Ford will pick it up. Back to Gargan. Now down in the hole to Hibbs. Hibbs trying to grab it. She flips a shot towards the net. Not a lot on that. And it hits the upright. Looks like we got a timeout for the Pioneers. We have a substitution. So we have a substitution now back to play. Oh, here and I'll start it back on offense once again. 3.20 to play here in the fourth. We're knotted at five. Hope you're enjoying all the action here on City TV Sports. I'm Pete Poy along with Kevin Bryant with a play-by-play -play for you. Oh, Bullhouse with it for Huron. Quick shot and it into the top corner. And Maya Bullhouse scores for Huron. And they retake the lead, 6-5. to five. It looked like Coach Will Hart was trying to get his... Uh, Defender Amanda Sugai to get dropped back and to help protect the net and the River Rat uh, with the Bullhouse just fired it. And that'll put the Rats up six to five. Now Pioneer with an opportunity to respond here. Uh, McCune, 14 seconds on the shot clock. Power Sullivan back to McCune. Stoop section there. Now Power Sullivan with it again. Four seconds on the shot clock. And intercepted by Chamberlain. And possession will go back to the River Rats. Now down to Bullhouse once again. Tries to get around Sugai. Bullhouse to Hibbs in the center, off her hands. And picked wow. up by Averill, and near miss there by the River Rats. And we've got a timeout.
Justin Thornton is just not too pleased with the way this game's being officiated. And that time, his player Hibbs was just getting mugged in front of the uh, the net there, and no call by the officials really set him off. Nice gamesmanship by the Pioneer coach, Will Hart, by calling a timeout, not allowing the Huron team to get, come back and use that aggression from the non-call to uh, for them to gain some momentum. Let's stymie their momentum because it, it seems that's the way the Rats have been scoring. Something goes wrong, they get back right. Here's a look at that last goal. There's Bullhouse with the fastball up high into the corner. Bullhouse kind of shot out of the water there before she fired it. Kind of Rambo-ish. Rambo? Ah! Oh, popping shoot. out of the water, you know? Is that the second one? I can't do that sound effect again. I'm sorry. I was going to ask you, too. <laughs> ah! It was, it was a good shot. It was a good shot. I can't remember. Which one? <laughs> it's a cross section. A uh, little combo meal. That's it. So 204 left to play in the match. Now remember last time out of a timeout, Huron came out and dialed up a real good shot, even though Pioneer is on the offensive end. Justin Thornton is known for his uh, his coaching with that chalkboard at timeout sessions. And we're back underway. Watch, watch Andrea Garbon. She's getting into her position again. All foul on Pioneer, turnover. And it'll be the Rats' turn once again on offense. Under two minutes to play. Hibs will possess. They really can't rest on their loyals. They can't just try to take some time off the clock by moving the ball around because uh, this game. Oh, and it's just in. like Hibs that. Quick shot off the, off the upright and off the goalkeeper's arm and into the net. And just like that, when I'm saying they can't rest on their loyals, the shot goes and finds the net. Well, as soon as possession began, Hibbs turned and fired it. And Averill really just couldn't find the ball because it looked like it hit the crossbar. And then, as you see, it hits the it Actually, she blocked it. And then she couldn't get control of it. Oh, Huron with the two-goal lead, 7-5. to five, And just like that, McCune brings it back to within one, 7-6. to six. And that's a hat, uh, hat trick for McCune. McHugh holding out high. Meter got a hand on it, just like Averill did on the previous goal, but couldn't stop it. And it's a one-goal game once again. Excellent play there by the Pioneers to come back and get right back in this match. Now Bullhouse with it down low. Back to shots, and she'll send it back down to Bullhouse. Try to work around Sugai, she does. Seconds. And the looping shot is good for another wow. Huron goal. Wow. Maya Bullhouse scores again. Wow. And Huron forges back out two goals with 44.3 to play. That was a nice shot, man. That was pretty. Oh, long skipping shot. You oh, see the goal. Me. Yeah. Got to really feel bad for the net minder for Pioneer. Lindsay Averill was just out of position. She's not really out of position. It was just a better shot. Now Huron really in a position to kill some clock at this point. Up to 12 seconds on the shot clock, 20 on the game clock. And no, uh, and they can just take their time and rag all that shot clock time off, and it's only going to leave Huron with about eight seconds to go in the game, down two. Yeah, Pioneer. The, they needed this. They needed the turnover, and they just didn't get the turnover there. Are we calling a timeout in the final minute? That is the call. Seems like kind of an odd timeout to call this late in the match. 
Yeah, sort of like when you're up by a touchdown with the second left. Because I don't think there's any two-point goals here. I don't think so either. But you never know. There's still time on the clock. Well, you love those coaches that don't want to go home with the timeout. You know, they don't get any extra pay for that. And you're also instilling in your players to never give up. I got to like that. And, and so we'll have nine seconds remaining here in the fourth period. And Coach Will Hart hopefully can. Uh, I'm not sure what he's thinking. Well, you know the old cliche you never want to stop coaching. Always can use everything as a learning experience. Even, even for the exiting seniors. Getting everybody right in the exact position where the timeout was called and then the ball will be thrown into play. And we'll see what that timeout was for. Well, it'll be here on possession. I'll throw it down long. That's the end of the shot clock. So they called the timeout to, to get the ball down so they could turn it over to use a little bit more clock, probably. Uh, Pioneer's not going to do anything with it. That's going to do it for the rest of the time. And here on, we'll come away, we'll come away with the 8-6 to six victory over Pioneer on the road, as it were. Well, look at it. Huron had an opportunity earlier in the week to spoil the senior night. They didn't come through. Tonight they did. Good job, and it's nice to see that their fans traveled over to cheer them on. Good job by both teams tonight. I'd like to thank all the people that make this production possible. Our director also handling the computer graphics, Rob Cross, audio and replay by Jim Slim McKinley. Our camera guys, Katsumi Nagai, Michael Dermody, and Paul Sutherland. And for Kevin Bryant, this is Pete Poyer. Once again, the final from Pioneer. It's Pioneer 6 and here on 8.